Welcome everyone to uh, the conversation, uh, conversational email masterclass. Uh, so we'll be uh, we'll be uh, going over how to write emails that uh, get replies, and as well as how to uh, to automate this. And uh, we will be sending to everyone uh, after the webinar uh, a few things. Uh, number one, we will send to uh, the slides. Uh, we'll also send a recording of the webinar. Uh, during the webinar, you can uh, submit some questions and we'll be happy to ask to answer them. Uh, we will also be uh, conducting a poll. And in the end, uh, we have a few uh, special offers as well. Uh, just so you know, uh, you can see all the tools and, and different, different ways to, to participate uh, in uh, the Zoom app. Uh, of course, ask questions, give feedbacks, uh, as well as private chat. Uh, so today, uh, actually, I, I was I was supposed to be presenting with Rex. He had to, to, to miss it at the last second, but uh, we do have his slides, uh, really great slides. Uh, Rex, uh, of course, uh, runs the sales developers. Uh, it it uh, provides uh, companies with scalable proven prospecting uh, blueprints and outsourcing services. He also uh, co-authored a really great book called uh, Outbound Sales No Fluff, uh, number one bestseller on Amazon. Uh, and I'll be your host today, uh, Billy Attar. So I run uh, marketing at Exceed AI, which is a conversational nurturing platform. Um, startup veteran, uh, I have a lot of experience writing uh, these kind of emails. And of course, uh, for our own platform, uh, we offer our clients lots of templates, uh, which I write uh, the bulk of them. So why don't we uh, get started? Uh, the agenda today, uh, we'll start off going over what are conversational emails. Uh, and why they've become so important. Uh, next, we'll go over some uh, writing tips on how to create them and uh, write really good emails that uh, get responses. Uh, we'll go over when are the best scenarios to use it. Um, you know, a lot of you here who are attending are in sales and marketing, so we'll try to cover the different use cases, uh, as well as uh, how to create a workflow where you can automate uh, your conversations at scale, uh, which I think is the next level of uh, nurturing leads uh, to become opportunities. Uh, we'll follow it up with a short Q&A uh, as well as some special offers. Okay, so uh, we'll get started now. All right, so what are conversational emails? Uh, so if, if we look at the evolution really of how email has, uh, has gone on, uh, we started out with the, the email blast, a very simple one-to-many email, uh, followed by drip emails, which were a little bit smarter, right? So they were timed emails. Uh, and then we went to triggered emails. Uh, triggered emails basically are emails that are triggered based on behaviors, some sort of, sort of engagement or something like that. So it's a little bit smarter. Uh, and today uh, we have artificial intelligence, which actually allows us to, to send interactive emails, right? Or conversational emails, uh, where you can send an email to a lead, a lead can answer your email and, and your automated si automation system can actually respond to that email. Uh, so it's very, very cool. Uh, and, and this is the next level, really, of, of where we are today. Okay, uh, and so why is this so important? Well, well first off, uh, buyers prefer one-to-one -one communication, right? So 84% of buyers want to be treated like a person, not a number. And I think it's very important to, to remember is that uh, when we look at leads, you know, usually it's we're sending to thousands of leads or hundreds of leads. And not to think of them as leads, but to think of them as actual people and to treat them that way, because that's what they're expecting, right? So they're expecting something that uh, really feels like you're reaching out specifically to that person and they're not part of some kind of campaign. Um, and buyers also, of course, uh, going along the same dire direction, they expect personalization, right? So they want it to be personalized. They want it to look like you did some research uh, before you reached out to them. And we can even see that about two thirds are actually willing to switch brands if they don't feel uh, like they were getting personalized communications, uh, which is pretty high. Uh, and then, of course, continues and going even one one uh, step further. You know, today people don't have a lot of patience. They they make a demo request, they reply to your email, they expect immediate answer. Um, so that's another thing that buyers today they prefer immediacy, um, which which of course automation plays a big part in that, right? Because it's very hard to give immediate replies when when you're doing everything manually. Um, and 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 now. Even at 80% of buyers, they, they expect companies to respond and interact with them in real time. 
so this is probably why conversational marketing is taken off the way it has because it, it actually gives the companies a chance to to have conversations in real time with with leads uh, but it has a scale of automation in it um, and if we look at the the matrix here it's a little matrix of uh, conversational marketing platforms you see that it's not a big market yet, uh, but it's getting there. Uh, and there are, of course, a few big ones that, that we know about. So there's Hub, HubSpot, uh, Drift, Landbot, the, the company I work for, Exceed. Uh, these are all companies that, for instance, provide chatbots, uh, which if you're not familiar with the chatbot, of course, it's, it's just a little chat widget where you can chat with the software and you know, have like a two-way conversation. Um, so that's what we think about conversational marketing today. Uh, where it is the real-time interaction, um, but the next step is actually email bots. Uh, so that's again it's something that Exceed does, uh, where it, it's similar concept to the chatbot. Where you know if you look at the example we have here, you know someone can request a demo, the bot can reach out with an email and say, you know, thanks for requesting a demo. Can you tell me, you know, ask a qualifying question? Tell me how many leads do you have? Uh, and then based on on the response of, of, of the lead. Uh, you know, the bot will know either to disqualify or to say, oh, sounds great. Why don't we set up a meeting with the salesperson? Um, and, and the interesting thing about having uh, these email bots that you can work with is that a lot of times uh, these leads are still under marketing, marketing's control, right? So if it's a request demo lead, it's still probably under marketing's control. It hasn't been qualified yet, hasn't been handed off yet. Uh, and, but the emails that are being written, they're being written by marketing. Uh, but most of us marketers, we don't have a lot of experience in writing these types of emails because these aren't marketing emails. These aren't, you know, emails with design and, and, and special formatting. You know, they're not looking to impress. These are really sales type emails. Um, so one of the, the things that we really need to, to, to learn about as marketers, and of course, if you're in sales or sales development, it's always great uh, to learn more as well as but how to write these emails. Um, so we actually turn to, to Rex uh, to kind of give some tips on how to write these types of emails. Um, so we'll go over now how to write uh, emails that can start a conversation. Uh, first off, you have to remember that when you're writing an email to a person, you know you can target a specific company, whether you're doing outbound or, or if you're doing inbound and let's say you're doing ABM, right? So you're targeting a specific, specific person, but you're always selling to a person, right? So you always have to think when you write those emails, you know, how, how are they going to accept those emails? Think, think about if you were to write that email to yourself, right? If you write, write a big long email, lots of text and details and whatever, would you read that email, right? So you have to really think about it. Uh, and, and a great tip actually from uh, Dave Gerhard, who used to be of Drift, now uh, Privy, is uh, he, he said, whenever I write, I, I, I write like I was writing the email to my dad and I get in stock, right? So that's an amazing tip. If you want to, to write to a person, think about a person. Right? I mean, as smart creators, we always think about personas. So, you know, pick your persona, and when you write your email, really get into that person's shoes and think, you know, how would, would they read this? Would they open it? You know, will I lose them in the first sentence? Right? Because you're just interrupting them in the middle of the day to ask something. Um, so, it's very important, of course, and, and, and you see here the third tip that nobody really cares about your product, your company, your brand. Right? It's all about them. Right? It's all about, you know, how what's in it for them and, and that's really what you have to keep in mind what's in it for them and you have to write it in a way that they, they want to keep reading uh, and then of course uh, always write in the first person right because it's a one-to-one -one communication remember buyers they want this one-to-one -one communication they want it personalized so it's not an email coming from a per from a company to a person it's an email from a person to a person uh, so that's very very important Okay, next, uh, when you are writing these kind of emails, right, and, and you are giving some sort of ask, maybe like a sales ask, right? So you have to remember that there are rules to this, right? You don't want things to go into spam. You don't want them to look like spam, so you have to think about your subject. You have to think about your formatting. You have to think about the specific words, the lots of trigger words. You have to think about the number of, the, of links you have in your email. Um, of course, and in, in, in if you're doing outbound, of course, you have to think about your domain and warming it up and, and things like that. Uh, here, here is a, a great email a, a example of an email in, in, in that shows lots of personalization, right? And it also shows how, how you, you, you're, you're trying to show the, the recipient what's in it for them, right? So first off, if, if we look at this email, we see in the subject line, 
uh, here's that's a uh, dynamic text, dynamic text, but you can see uh, it says product name, uh, visualization on website. So the fact that they have the product name of, of the lead in the subject and they have their website in the subject will already make the email jump out. Why? Because it's already something that the, that the lead recognizes. He recognizes the name and the name of the product. And the fact that you have the name of the product there means that you spend some time uh, looking at the, uh, the website, right? You did your research. Um, so it's very important. Uh, then, of course, if we look at, at the uh, first paragraph here, right? So, we, you know, we came about products of, of your type, your name. Again, lots of uh, custom personalization there to make sure that you're really looking, looking at things, uh, you know, and uh, we had a chance to view your e-commerce experience. Again, showing that you actually took some time to, to kind of try them out, right? Now uh, we're, we're working on, on, brand, on with fashion brands selling online, similar to whatever your company is, right? And we found key purchasing decisions by customers is largely attributed to the visual appearance of their products, right? So this, this first paragraph is showing how much research and how much thought you gave into the leads company, um, which, you know, and if you're targeting many companies in the same industry, probably you don't have, even have to change it all that much. Um, then of course you jump straight into the second one, right? Now that you've established that, hey, look, uh, you know, I took a look at what you're doing, I understand it, right? You have their 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 uh, attention now, right? They jump into it and say, our team, whatever, is focused on assisting growing brands like yours uh, to take advantage of through our visualization and image management solution, right? So now one simple sentence, they have an idea of what you're talking about, uh, because again, if you take if you write really long emails and you take too long to get to the point, you lose people. Right. Then, then the next one is uh, less about what you do, and but more about what you can get from it. Right. Again, it's the what's in it for me. Right. So, so it's rather than physically shooting thousands of, of photos to clearly require to highlight all variations, we turn one photo into images of every possible combination digitally and at a fraction of the cost available otherwise. Right. So basically, this, this last this uh, paragraph is all about, hey, you know, this is what we do. Here's how we'll save you time and headache and save you money. All right. So it's, these the, those two sentences right there are the entire sales pitch. It's not a long email, no highlighting. It not, doesn't need much. It goes right to the point. Then of course there's a CTA. If you have a short window of uh, for 15 minutes, and of course at the bottom there's a, a nice little cute PS. Right? I like your product. Expe expect an order from you soon. Okay. Uh, then here you can see. Uh, we have just another example of, uh, you know, writing, writing really good uh, emails that start conversations. Uh, this one is, is from uh, the sales developers, uh, it's Rex's company. Uh, they have their own message builder uh, that, by the way, anybody can use. Um, and again, it has an interesting, uh, the subject again, still a priority. Uh, it's a very interesting uh, subject, you know, get piques people's interest. Uh, and then, of course, Again, there's a bit of uh, personalization there, right? So most people I end up talking to, working with us, uh, when whatever topic is relevant is at or near the top of the priority list. Uh, and then they give a few bullet points, right, to 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 show you uh, why it's important. And then they get straight to the the CTA. So short to the point, a bit of customization. Uh, that's really all you really need. Uh, but the harsh truth, when you're sending uh, these emails, especially outbound emails when they're cold leads, uh, but when you're sending the emails anyway, right? Because if we're in marketing, uh, we also have, let's say, thousands of leads in our CRM, right? Uh, they're not talking to us. They haven't opened our nurturing anymore. So we're, we're sending to them too. And it's hard to get them to reply. Uh, and the harsh truth is that uh, there's no perfect uh, number of steps in a cadence. So a cadence, of course, if you're not familiar with that, it's basically your your your, your campaign, right? The number of emails you're sending until you give up. Uh, and there's no formula, it's all trial and error, or it's all iteration. Uh, you have to all the time refresh, uh, A-B test, uh, you know, maybe change the subject, maybe try to put a little bit different custom, uh, personalization inside the email. Uh, but you're also, you're constantly changing things to see, you know, if you can get better results. Uh, now, if, if you, you want to see people who are really, really good at uh, writing like a person, and right? in, in, in not just writing it like a person, but writing to the point where they, they can make a connection with people who are just reading what they're writing. Uh, we have four people who, who are, you should definitely look up. 
there's Dave Ger Gerhardt uh, from Privy, uh, Amy Volaz, uh, Justin Welsh, and James uh, Carberry. Uh, four guys who, who really, really write well. Uh, and I think uh, if you follow them, especially on LinkedIn, uh, you can get you know a real feel for for writing that's to the point, uh, that understands how to highlight value, and uh, you know make makes people really have a feel a connection. Okay, so now the question is, when when should you be conversational? Right, conversational emails are great, uh, but you don't want to send them all the time, and it doesn't make sense to send them all the time. But it does make a lot of sense to send them in certain situations. Uh, so which uh, situations should you be sending them in? Uh, first off, uh, you should send them in, in situations where the email is fairly repetitive, where you're not going to constantly change uh, what you'll be sending. So for instance, request demo is a good example. You know, when someone requests a demo, you basically send the same email every single time. Uh, so that, that's, that's fairly repetitive, right? Uh, there has to be a next step. Right? There's no point in starting conversation just for the sake of having conversation. You want to move them uh, to a next step where that next step or the step after that would be a handoff to a salesperson. Um, and then of course, it, it has to be that there are a limited number of directions in the conversation because if, if you want to automate your conversation, you have to be able to predict more or less where the conversation is going to go. Again, so, so just going back to the request demo, which again is it's like the perfect, the perfect place to test out uh, conversational emails. Uh, someone asks, uh, requests a demo, you reply and you, you, you ask qualifying questions. So qualifying questions, either their answer passes qualification or it doesn't. So there are really only two ways it can go. Um, you know. So these are, that's a situation where you really should, should be using conversational emails. Uh, and just to give you uh, a few examples, so of course, request demo. Um, if you have a freemium product, uh, it actually works uh, very well there, right? Because you have you know thousands of, of free users. You know your, your sales team can't get to all of them, so it's a great way to to kind of extend the sales team uh, through automation. Uh, if you have uh, leads in your CRM that nobody's getting to, I think uh, all of us today uh, are at the point where you know our CRM we we generate lots and lots of leads, and our CRMs are just full of leads that are you know they they fit the profile. They might have been interested at one point, uh, and, and it's a shame that uh, we can't do much with them other than sending them, you know, one-way nurturing emails. Uh, so sending conversational style emails to to leads in the CRM is a great way to see, you know, who's still interested, who's willing to give it another chance, um, you know, who's willing to talk to sales. Uh, then of course there are leads that uh, maybe are beginning to engage in your system. A lot of times in uh, marketing automation will simply send a notification to the sales team to, to reach out. Uh, but you don't have to, uh, you know, you can let the sales focus on selling and, you know, we can leave it up to marketing to try and, uh, and, and get, get the lead to the point where they're willing to, to, to speak uh, instead of having the sales team actually chase the lead. Um, and then of course, if you have low scoring leads, but you're not hundred percent sure uh, that they're not worth it, right? As long as the lead hasn't been disqualified, then it has potential. Uh, so that's actually a very, very good use case, again, uh, for automated uh, conversational emails. Uh, if you can try to, to replicate what the, the sales reps are sending, right? And, and then you can see which one of these leads actually are willing, you know, to pay for your product, uh, you know, or willing to try it out, or maybe their business is not what you expected it to be. Um, and of course, there's what we call overflow. So it's basically any situation where, you know, you, you normally have your salespeople uh, handle the responses, um, but if there are too many for them to handle, and if we go back to the beginning, we remember that you know most people uh, expect immediate replies. So if, if you simply are generating too many leads, uh, this is a great way to help out your sales team. And, and you know if you do it right, you actually help them out a lot because they'll just simply show up every, all the time and open up the calendar and see which which deals are which leads sorry are, are, are waiting to talk to them. Uh, but one thing you have to remember is this is these types of emails are much different than what we're used to, especially as marketers, right? These are sales type uh, emails. So you need to work with your sales team or sales development team or, or biz dev team or inside sales team. Uh, you need to work with them to see what works for them and how they do it. Uh, this really is, uh, you know, something that you do as a team. 
uh, just to give you a few examples of, of uh, emails that we send uh, with Exceed, the con conversational style emails. So one scenario uh, that we might all be familiar with is the asset download, right? So someone downloads, to say, an ebook, some sort of PDF. You know, normally it's uh, we either do do absolutely nothing, right? We don't send them anything at all, and whatever. It's just a wasted opportunity. Or we'll just send them, you know, nurturing emails after that, and, and there's, you know, we don't get responses. We don't do anything. Uh, so, so what we do here is we actually we we reach out to to the we don't we don't necessarily push them hard for the sell, but we'll reach out to ask them, you know, not what they think about the ebook because they probably haven't read it yet, but what motivated them to download it. Um, so there, it, you know, we can we can get a lot of good research even if we don't push a long conversation. At a minimum, we can get a lot of good feedback. <clears throat> excuse me, on why the lead came to us, why the lead downloaded it, right? Which will help us, of course, in the future in, in whether it's nurturing the lead or, or figuring out what to write in the future. Another example, uh, which uh, I think uh, all the sales uh, sales and SDRs and attendants will enjoy, uh, is automating the meeting, meeting rescheduling. Uh, so I read recently, I think on, on Gong, that something like 30% of, of uh, leads end up missing their, their scheduled meetings with uh, sales teams. That's a pretty big number, 30%. Um, so, which means that if you have lots of, lots of meetings scheduled, you also have lots of missed meetings and lots of chasing of the leads after the meetings. Um, you can actually uh, automate uh, the follow-up, right? You can have the automation reach out, you know, the person misses the meeting, so this guy changes the status in the CRM, trigger an email and it will just automate sending emails to to the lead until the lead you know chooses a new time uh, for the meeting and then the salesperson can change the status again to end the campaign or the sequence and there you go the salesperson didn't have to chase the lead uh, you get the lead back on track and uh, it's a win-win uh, the last one uh, conference invites uh, which is also something that i think that a lot of us struggle with <clears throat> so Usually in conferences, you know, people have, you know, a lot of things on their mind. They're going to be in a lot of meetings. They're going to see a lot of booths and we're fighting for their attention, right? And oftentimes we'll, we'll send emails, especially, you know, fancy marketing emails, telling them to come, come stop by our booth. Uh, very few people respond to those types of emails. Um, but if you want to do something really personal, right, that feels like it's this one-to-one -one, uh, outreach, uh, I'll give you an example of what we did where we sent from our head of sales, very personal emails, you know, plain text, where we said, hey, our CEO uh, will be at the conference and we'd love to meet you, right? And this is written very informally, you know, it would be a great opportunity to catch up, see how we can work more closely together. So it looks like because you're, you know, this is your head of sales and saying, come meet him with our, our CEO, it looks like you're really treating this lead as someone important, right? And, and, and because you're connecting names, it's not, hey, come stop by our booth. That's extremely impersonal. Say we say, hey, this person, right, with this name, really wants to meet you. That's very personal. It makes people feel like they, they need to oblige. So now that we kind of went over the conversational emails, uh, how does this fit in the stack? Uh, so if you look at the, a very basic stack, right, a tech stack, right, you have the CRM, you have marketing automation, which marketing uses, and sales sales automation, which sales uses. So these, these conversational emails is actually somewhere in between, right? So it, it's really because the goal of conversational email is to get the lead to the sales team, right? To get it from marketing to sales. It's, it's basically the bridge between the two, um, which again, this is why uh, it, it's, it's, it's um, very much something that you should be writing alongside uh, with your sales or sales development team uh, to make sure that they hand off and everything else is really streamlined. So how do we do it at Exceed? All right, uh, we're, I think we're one of the few companies that have been doing conversational email now for a while, uh, since we eat our own dog food. And so here's a, a just, I put a, a very basic workflow on how we do it. Uh, so for instance, uh, we started here at the left, new lead comes in, right? So we immediately, uh, you know, through our CRM, we, we send the lead to, to Exceed, the bot reaches out to pre-qualify the lead, right? So why do I say pre-qualify and not qualify? Uh, because qualification sometimes or often requires an actual phone call, right? So we can't, we don't want to send the lead straight to sales. 
right? Because then they have to deal with leads that might eventually be, be you know, not worth their time. And then they, they don't have a lot of time for the leads that are worth their time. So we send them an email with usually a question or two. If they can pass those first two questions, right? And they give answers that make it look like they, they should be very good leads, right? The bot will go ahead and try to schedule a, a demo with them. And, and then if they scan, schedule, it hands it off to, to the SDR, who will qualify the lead in the call. And then it goes to the account executive as an opportunity already to try and close. And you know, now in the sales process, it looks a little bit more complicated, but it's, I think it's actually kind of, kind of simple, even simpler than the inbound, is you have a lead, however you got them through, through inbound or through outbound. You schedule a meeting with them for the, the SDR or the account executive. If they, they no-show the meeting, or they become unresponsive and after the meeting, we, we send them to, to exceed and, and, and it'll follow up. Now you could follow up, of course, manually, but that's very time consuming for a lead that might never answer. Uh, and, and of course, when you have automation to do the follow-up, it could keep following up over and over and over again, right? It takes something like five to, I don't remember, it's five to seven or five to 12 emails to get a lead to respond uh, in average. Right? So that's a lot of emails, a lot of time that you have to devote sending those follow-ups over and over again. And as people, sometimes we, we just don't feel comfortable following up that much. Right? So if you automate it, you can keep doing it. Right? And you keep following up, and which is what we do uh, with our bot, right? And try to get that meeting rescheduled. If it does, it goes back to the sales. Uh, again, if it doesn't work, we'll go back uh, to, to follow up and, and reschedule again. Right? And the follow-up sometimes, you might send it to nurturing and nurturing them for, for a while and then trying to follow up again, right? And move it back to sales. Um, and in any case, in the entire process, you know, you, you always want to, 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 to think to yourself, when should I have a sales type email go out? When should I have a marketing type email go out? Okay, uh, now I'm going to uh, give you guys a few seconds just to, to launch the poll. Uh, you know, you should be seeing it now, uh, just asking, you know, now that you've seen a little bit about what conversational emails are and how you can put them into your workflow, uh, if you can just fill out the poll and uh, see how you plan on using it, uh, you know, for your company. Okay, so we'll give it uh, maybe about uh, 20 seconds here, uh, just to see uh, what, peop what people say. I see all the votes coming in. Uh, we'll give it another 10 seconds and uh, we'll end the poll and look at the, and, uh, I'll go over the results uh, just in case anybody here is uh, interested in seeing uh, what, what others are thinking. All right, five, four, three, two, one, last chance to push. All right. So uh, the results of the poll, uh, you know, it's 54%, uh, you know, plan on doing it for outbound, which makes a lot of sense. Of course, you're getting lots and lots of replies in outbound. You're sending a whole lot of emails. So I hope you, I hope you get lots and lots of replies. Um, so conversational, actually, if you, if you can automate those replies for your sales team or, or, or your SDR team, by the way, if you can automate those replies and filter out, uh, you know, a lot of the, the disqualified leads or, or, or offload the chasing of the leads to get things scheduled, uh, you actually see for your SDRs, and for your account executives, you'll see a lot more productivity. Um, we see 23% for inbound lead qualification, 54% for re-engaging uh, CRM leads. Uh, yes, that uh, makes a lot of sense as well. 23% uh, of conference invites uh, for 23% scheduled meetings and 15% for asset download follow-up, which also very nice. Okay, uh, so now let's uh, just move to Q&A. And uh, I have uh, a few questions here already that I see. Let's see if there are any others. Okay, so uh, the, first, the first question that I see here is, uh, what sources do you use to find uh, information for, for personalization? Okay, so uh, there are a lot of different places you can go uh, for personalization. Of course, you can you can find uh, firmographic uh, information, uh, you know, from companies like Clearbit. Uh, you can you can of course take information from you know data from companies like Zoom Info as well. Um, you know, an, an easy way to do it is also just to look up 
the person on LinkedIn, a lot of times on LinkedIn, someone will have, you know, the little blurb about what they're interested in, or, you know, you look at the, what, what they're, what's in their job title and you'll see what they're, what they're managing, or you might even see their history of, you know, the different types of jobs they've had in the past. And of course, look at the company's website. Uh, what, have I, what I found has actually worked really well for me, uh, and it depends again on, on what you're offering, but um, if you can name, if you're in B2B especially, if you can name some of the products or the features of their product, it's really a great way to show that you, you understand what they're doing. Um, next, next question. Uh, does it matter which platform you use to send the emails? Uh, in general, no. Obviously, certain platforms have capabilities that other platforms don't. Like, for instance, a marketing automation platform, let's say like HubSpot or Marketo, it is harder to, to automate an actual conversation because it's not built for two-way conversations. Um, so you might have to you know, be very creative in how you build it. Um, but what you do have to keep in mind is that uh, these emails should be plain text. And we found with, uh, with a lot of our customers, actually, when, when you try to send emails that are for, you know, very nicely formatted or have images in them, it actually hurts the conversion rate. Right? So they should look like it's an email that somebody wrote up you know, in their own uh, email client and just sent one out you know, one to one. Uh, what is the optimal length for an email? Uh, it's a good question. Uh, I usually see between three to four paragraphs. I think a, a good email, whether it's outbound or inbound, if you're trying to get a response, uh, it should be, you know, first line, uh, just some sort of brief inter introduction that's very personalized, right? Followed by what you want, you know, what's in it for them, and the ask, right? So it could be anywhere between, you know, three to five sentences. Um, then, of course, do you recommend using images inside the emails? Uh, no. Uh, for these types of emails, I, I don't think it, it makes any sense, really. Uh, you don't want it to feel also like you designed it and like it's a marketing email, right? Because we get so many marketing emails at this point that we kind of, we become blind to them. It's, it's like uh, they used to have, uh, you know, the, the banners all over the internet and people started, uh, you know, developing banner blindness where they wouldn't notice the banner ads. Um, so I think we're, we're getting close to this as well, um, especially since we have, you know, so many platforms today and we're all uh, signing up uh, for so many platforms. We're getting lots and lots of emails and we're not paying attention to them anymore. Um, also, it, it could possibly hurt your, your delivery rate. Uh, another email I see, uh, email signatures. Yeah, so uh, so, I, so, so I was asked uh, here uh, if email signatures, uh, you know, with links and images in them can hurt, your, can hurt uh, the email as well. Um, potentially it can. I don't think, I've never seen a case really where it has, you know, as long as there's nothing that looks spammy in it and there are no spammy links in it, um, you know, it should be okay. Uh, I do think that sticking with the simplest signature you can that looks nice, which you can do, by the way, you can design, you know, just using colors and bold and, and, and you know, that's it. Uh, you can do a, pr a pretty decent uh, signature. And if you're going to automate, I definitely would go with the simplest signature as possible, uh, just because it doesn't offer much, right? If you can go with something that looks simple and professional, it's good enough because most people aren't going to pay attention that much to your, your signature other than seeing maybe who you are, where you're from, uh, what your job title is, and, and that's it. I, I would also add, uh, just, just to, to point out, you probably shouldn't be tracking much in your emails either, right? Outside of tracking opens, don't track clicks. Uh, that that has actually a negative impact on, on your uh, your spam score. Okay. Uh, if there are no other questions, and I think that's about it, uh, we'll we'll move on to the next step. Uh, just to recap everything we've gone over today. So again, buyers do prefer conversations. I think we haven't had these conversations up until now because it's been very hard to to do them at scale. Right? So we're in a situation where we're basically talking at, at our leads and at our customers instead of talking to them. <clears throat> uh, but with uh, you know, the technology advancing, with our artificial intelligence, with all these different conversational marketing platforms, uh, I, we do have an opportunity now uh, to, to scale this. And I think anyone who starts doing these types of emails will, will see uh, a, a big impact and I'm not just saying this because I work for one of these platforms I'm, I'm saying it because if if you follow technology there's always you know the first ones that get in are the ones that have you know they're doing something people aren't used to so it's very uh, effective 
and and at a certain point then everyone does it right so it becomes harder right if competition for for attention um uh, i see some people have some more questions uh if you have a question and you feel like i haven't answered it uh just so you know uh, i'll give you my email at the end of, of the presentation and, and feel free to to email me and i'll, I'll get back to you uh, right away uh, or you can submit I'll even, you know, if you want, you can even submit an email uh, question now and I'll try to answer it live. Um, okay, uh, the next point uh, on the recap, uh, sell to people, not to numbers. Always remember you're selling to people. Um, you know, you're looking for numbers, but you're selling to people. So everything should be very personalized, you know, very informal as if you were talking to, you know, a friend or a family member. Uh, next is uh, iterate and test. Right? Always iterate and test. And, and finally, uh, if you're going to use the conversational uh, emails, uh, I recommend that you, you do everything with uh, the sale in mind. Uh, you know, it's not, I don't think we're at the point yet where you can have just, you know, nice conversations with your leads. Uh, it's really more of, you know, talk to them so you can see if you can help them make a decision and, and get to the next step. Okay, uh, and Al, uh, because, uh, you know, we appreciate you coming to attend, uh, we have some exclusive offers uh for you uh first off is uh for from the sales developers they're, they're offering a free 15-minute consult with, with rex free access to their up to up level which is a, their platform for developing uh, email templates uh so if it's something you're interested in uh, feel free to contact me and i'll pass it on to them uh, and and from us uh, at exceed uh we'd be happy uh to you know actually just give you feedback and suggestions uh, on, on your own email playbooks, uh, whether you have something that you're using now or something that you want to, to use in the future. Um, you know, just uh, I'm very happy to help people out, especially with something uh, new like uh, conversational emails. Uh, so you can just email me, you know, and ask uh, for my advice, and I'm happy, more than happy to look at it. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, again, if you have any questions following this presentation. Uh, or you'd like to get my uh, my feedback on, on any kind of uh, email playbook or even email, individual emails, uh, feel free to send me an email to billy.attar, uh, A-T-T-A-R, at exceed.ai. Uh, so thank you very much.